Hey everyone, let's take a look at our next multiple choice question. So it says a survey was conducted to estimate the proportion of California workers who would rather live in a different state. So at that point, I'm just gonna highlight, oops, the word proportion. That is uh, usually a buzzword for me. In a random sample of 100 California workers, okay, so I've got random sample, 28% um, indicate that they would rather live in another state. Okay, oh, a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all California workers who would rather live in a state another state is. Okay, so I've got my confidence interval. I can see that phrasing here. Again, they're reiterating that this is a proportion. So I'm going to put, if this is a confidence interval problem, this is going to be a chapter eight problem where we looked at one sample CIs for um, proportions or means, but we are in prop land. So ultimately I'm going to use a Z star critical value. Now, if I want to figure out my variable, there's a couple of ways to look at it, right? I have this sample of 100. So really, I'm keeping track over the course of this sample, the number of Californians who would rather live in another state. So number of, and let me get this right, California workers who would rather live in another state. in our sample of 100. And because this is really, uh, well, it's a discrete numerical variable, it's ultimately starting from a categorical place, right? For each person you ask, they're either gonna say yes or no. And then over the course of the sample, we're gonna keep track of the number who say yes. And then we're gonna turn that into a proportion, right? This will be the proportion of California workers who would rather live in another state. All right, and that's just how this always works with categorical variables, right? We, we keep track of this frequency, the frequency of successes, we divide it by sample size, and then we get a proportion. But this is ultimately asking us to create a confidence interval. So I'm going to start with assumptions. And in theory, you don't have to do this because if I look at my answers, A through D, clearly they made the confidence interval. So I don't really need to check the assumptions to see if I'm allowed to, but I'm going to do it just because just for practice. So the first one in any CI or hype test is did I have a random sample? And yes, I did. Now in proportion land, we need to check normality. So I need to check N P prime and N one minus P prime and make sure that they're both greater than or equal to 10. And my P prime here is 28%, right? So basically 28 out of these 100 folks said they'd rather live in another state. So I'm gonna do 100 times 28% and I get 28, and that is greater than or equal to 10. And then its complement is gonna give me 72, which is also greater than or equal to 10. So another way of saying that is when I took my sample of 100 Californians, 28 said I'd like to live in another state, and 72 said they didn't. Okay, the third assumption is always that sample size is small relative to my population. Now my sample size, I'll, I'll do it over here. My sample size was 100. If I multiply that by 10, that's 1,000. Real safe to say there's at least 1,000 folks working in California. All right, if I wanted to title this, and I might run out of room here, but this would be a one sample proportion Z star confidence interval. And if I want to actually construct my CI, it's always your statistic plus or minus a margin of error. And in this case, this is the formula for the margin of error, the Z star times the square root of P prime one minus P prime over N. And I'm just going to substitute in the values I need, right? So to be real specific here, let me color code this. P prime is going to be 28%, right? Uh, let me change colors. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to change colors just yet. My bad. I'm going to also put that here and here. That's where the 28% will go. Uh, let me go to green. If I had 100 folks in my sample, I'm going to put that in for N. And then the last thing I need to figure out is Z star. Well, because I have a 95% confidence interval, I know my Z star value is going to be 1.96. So if I start to write this up, I'm looking at 28 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 28, one minus 28, or technically 0.28 uh, over 100. 
And I could crunch all of this on my calculator if I wanted to. Um, and when I say I'm going to crunch it on my calculator either way, I meant if you wanted to, you could find this number on your calculator, add it to 28 and subtract it from 28 and figure out where your lower and upper bounds fall. But I'm actually just going to go to the one prop Z interval on my calculator and figure out what the answer is. Now I'm going to use the calculator app. But it's similar enough to how we would do it on the physical calculator. So I'll go over to tests and I have to head over to one prop Z interval and it's down there at option A. So let me go ahead and enter this in. Now I had 28 successes out of 100 folks, right? Because I had a 28% um, success rate. And if you do N times P, that was 28 successes. They did say my confidence level was 95%. So let me hit enter here. So let me do 95. Oops. JK, JK, 0.95, let me hit enter. And for some reason, it is not working. That is, oh, I know why, because I see my N is 28. Also, this needed to be 100. Cool, just wanted to do that. Okay, so now I can see my lower and upper bound. It looks like it's about 19 or 0.192 to 0.368 for my lower and upper bound. So I'm just gonna transfer that over. Let's see what we get. So, or let me see, I had, I think I said 0.192 to 0.368, and let's go ahead and match that up with B. All right, and just for fun, I'm gonna show you, if you wanted to do this the long way, and I don't know that I would really recommend it, but let me show you what I mean. So let's start with 28%, but let's find this number. Let's find our margin of error. And again, I'm gonna use my calculator. Let me get out of this. So I'm gonna do um, 0.28 times one minus 0.28, right? I'm gonna divide that number by 100. All right, then I'm gonna take the square root of that number and I get that, oh, just kidding. And then I need to multiply it by 1.96 and that is my margin of error. It's 0.088. So let me head back here, right? So I would need to do 28 plus 0.088. Oops, let me write 088. And then I could do 28% minus 0.088. All right, and let's go ahead and just do one of these. So let me go ahead and do 0.28 plus 0.088, and you see there we are at 0.368, right? There was my upper bound. If I go back through this and change this to subtraction, there's my lower bound of 0.192. Now, I, I would argue that takes a lot longer, right? There, there's a lot more calculator commands you gotta do and then more room for error. That's why I use the one prop Z interval. It just gets me this answer here immediately. All right, thanks so much.